Hi everyone and welcome to Lee Chess Liga 3C. We're up back up again to the third division. Let's see who we have today. Uh, I'm joined by Grandmaster Danny Gormali. He um we can at the moment we can hear him but not see him. But say yeah, something. Sorry, sorry about this. Sorry about this. I'm having another nervous breakdown, as you know. Like, uh... <laughs> Well, don't do that, Danny. It's fine. Peter, you know, some people might prefer it. Well, exactly. I mean, not to see my ugly mug must be must be a tremendous advantage. Okay, so we have um, the original king. AGD has already won a game. Uh, let's follow. Is Atomrod playing yet? Not yet. Let's follow VKT Chess who is white in this game and seems to have knights in a very interesting place, threatening a fork here. Yeah, knight g5 is threatening knight e6. So queen d6 looks like a normal move. Um, is there a tactic there? Don't see anything immediately devastating. Bishop b1 looks a bit wrong to me. I don't. I think that f5 point is very well defended. With bishop seem, I think he was a little bit afraid of rook c2. Right, yeah. Yes. Um, so there might be tactics here. I don't know, but, uh, I mean, something like Bishop, yeah, Bishop D5 is a good move because you're overprotecting that square. And now, uh, maybe some move like, maybe Knight G4, yeah, A5 space gain. I mean, that shows a lot of confidence. I'm impressed with that move. Uh, Queen F4. Maybe knight g6. Okay, he stopped that knight g6. Oh. Uh, he's gone back in there. He's going for queen h6, wow. isn't he? Yeah, that's a devastating move. Black should not have allowed that. I think he overlooked that completely. Uh, probably a move like rook f8 was better. Although there Can was you do a knight here to defend, perhaps. Yes, but it's a tough move. Oh, he's allowed. He's allowed queen he's allowed h6. Allowed immediate mate. It's a very nasty tactic. Well done, VKT chess. Lovely start. Okay. Um, let us see Green Becker. He is black in a major piece ending, attacking this rook on h4. Don't hi, like Skittos Attack. How are you? I don't like White's position. Oh, hi, Nick. How are you doing, man? I don't like White's position here. The king looks very, very open. White has no attacking chances. I would, I would rate this position as dead lost, Natasha. Queen C. Yeah, but that's okay because we're black. <laughs> Yeah, it's not okay though. If you're white and you got a it's not for white, yeah. You've obviously misplayed it. It's not okay at all. It's terrible. <laughs> That's true. It ruined the quality of our stream by misplaying. You're sick in bed, Skettos attack. I'm sorry to hear that. Queen takes G3. I think you had to try Rook G2. And maybe you've got COVID, Nick. Oh, I hope. Well, I don't know. COVID. Like I had COVID and it wasn't so bad. But I know. I know some people obviously can get it badly. As, yeah, I mean, it all depends on how well you've been vaccinated and yeah, and right. how certain people respond to it uh, quite quite well, and other people don't respond to it at all. No. Yeah, and, and what variant? You're getting all sorts of things, lots of unknowns with that. So David Wilson, oh, he's a bishop down now, unfortunately. Know, so today, Danny, the time limit is three plus zero, so we don't have an increment. Oh, today. that's really cutthroat. You know, I think that's yeah. uh, we were saying this the other day. I think that it's it's very deadly. Yeah. And uh, I think in situations like that, you just need to really, really play very quickly indeed. Yeah. Um, you know, at the start of the game, I think a lot of people, for some reason, I can't seem to. Uh, hang on, let me. I can't seem to get the full. Oh, there we go. That's better. Yeah, so, yeah, this is like a typical position. Oh, the GM Atomrod is playing. He's playing a good game. Yes, it's actually. GM Atomrod. He's playing the correct moves. Um, Knight B3 is at wow. This is why he's getting to 2,500. Keith has got this uh, belief that he's going to get to 2,500. Um, yeah. Moves like that. However, what if the bishop moves? The, the well, white bishop moves because yeah, there's a piece. Maybe why he will never get past 2,500 again because it moves <laughs> like that. Yeah, that yeah, it was a very confident tactic. That. I think you've got to be confident when you play chess. This is a, a thing that I think some people 
um, even if your moves are bad, if you yeah. just play them confidently, like often I'll play the engine in these training games and it will play these rubbish openings, but it just gives you problems to solve. Mm. And um, rook c2 is an interesting move. So the idea is if queen b3, I have rook b2, and maybe rook b2 oh, yeah. anyway. He's playing a very, very fast game, but yeah, this seems to work out. This is good. This works, right? Well, have you got bishop h7? Is that, it doesn't change anything. I think it'll. Wow, wow, great tactics. But, but hang on, what about rook over to f2? I think that was a blunder. I think you should have gone. Oh, bishop. yes. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, this was. But no, 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 but you can still take the queen and go bishop d4. You can still take and go bishop d4. And then your b pawn's quite far up the board. Uh, might be an unclear endgame. Maybe better yeah. for white, maybe even winning for white. I don't know, but it's going to take a while to uh, for white to consolidate. The king can probably, black king can rush in. So he has found the correct move. So now we get this very interesting ending. G3, I would probably play it as white, unless there's a, a bishop. C4 was also possible there, but possibly losing. So, well, you could put the bishop back on A2 once you you, you gobbled E6. So it's kind of three pawns for the bishop. Yeah. So if if I was black here, he's gone rook F3, a clever move. Uh, but king G2, uh, you can't take on D3 because of the... Um, so rook E3 would be a blunder here because of rook F8 move. Uh, yeah. So that will probably take and then try and bring his king. Like king, F, he can't go king f seven, so it's going to be five. King g two, so now you have to take. It's nice to take, and then yeah. So the get... question is, what is happening in his end game? Is it better for well b four now? A four he has to play because if he takes, there's an a four trick, I think, which is ah, uh, does is it that... work? I'm not so sure, sure actually if that was winning because there was a king back to c one quickly, but. Yeah, so I'm not sure. But now bishop d5 takes b3. Actually, yeah. he's he misplayed it slightly. I think he could have just gone bishop d5 takes b3 immediately. But this is looking bad for... Yeah, uh, because, you know, maybe you can just take the pawn, yeah. And... Now the h pawn's on then. Yeah, and then just take on... Um, these Armenians. Uh, I'm really good, you know, played an Armenian uh, recently. Geez. Henrik Stapinian. Yeah. At the uh, foreign CL when I drew, and he's like, it's only 2200 or 2100. Kid. Who is that? I didn't catch it, Danny. Uh, Henrik Stepanian from oh, okay, okay. from England, but obviously from mm. Armenian heritage, and he drew mm. it. He seemed to spend a lot of time away from the board, so I was wondering, like, and every single one of his moves was like the top move of the engine. You know, you can get very paranoid. I don't know if you've ever had games like that. Have you, have you ever had games where you start getting paranoid? Actually, surprisingly little, but I have, yeah. Yeah. Can you remember any specific examples or you were too polite to mention who it was? <laughs> That's, um, I don't remember. I don't remember. I, I was playing some guy called Alexei Slavin as an IM. I'd already lost to him with White in the, in the British Championships. So I played in a tournament in Bedford. Okay. He crushed me in about 17 moves with White, but he seemed to spend no time at the board whatsoever. And yeah. uh, and then you do wonder, you know, like if if that game was a legitimate game. Bishop G five here for White probably a good move. Um, Bishop C seven, very clever tactic. Uh, so if you, yeah, that's actually big big trouble for Black because if you take on C seven, I rook takes C eight, which is the end of the game. Hi, Southern Chris, the ghost and the ghost of Danny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not looking good for me, unfortunately. I'm, s I'm sorry to say. I feel humiliated by this lack of presence. <laughs> um, but this is not uh, unusual um, for me uh, to have these problems with his camera. I'm, I'm trying to sort it out, but I don't really know how, how to because I'm not very good with is it. Is it a new computer, Danny? No, I've had it for years. Um, yeah. I've not had a problem until a few months ago. So it seems to pick up exit now and not recognize uh, your normal camera. Um, yeah. So I could try stopping video and then start video. But yeah, there's no there's no light that's coming on, which is a problem. Oh, now you're a G. Now I'm a G. Yeah. Yeah, but there's no light that's coming. You need a light to come on. Uh, okay. If the light comes on, but unfortunately, the light isn't coming on. 
not in my not not in my um, camera, not in my brain either. So. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, I've, I've had a few issues, so I've got connected cameras, I'm trying, oh, I can troubleshoot this, yeah, maybe I can troubleshoot this, oh, hang on a minute, there's now a light that's come on. Oh, that sounds promising. That sounds promising, right. Not promising for Ferrari fan, though, here. He's a rook down, but he does have some checks. Got to just try and push the pawn, I suppose, but this is not going to work. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like these people, they should just resign. You know, once you get lost position, just, just resign it. You know, there's no point in playing on these games. You're just wasting time. So is that a little bit condescending? Maybe that's a little bit condescending. I'll probably annoy people with, with this. With this arrogant attitude that I have. Did we see David Wilson already? I already forgot. We can see him again if we have. If we have. Although he does seem to have a knight in on f on e six, which doesn't look that pleasant. Um. Yeah, this looks lost as well. Like uh, knight f seven, take on f eight, e six. Bishop h6 is probably, well, Bishop g5 as well, just attacking. Uh, he's going for the opening up the king option, which seems like a pretty good option, to be honest. I don't know. What was the opening there? Go, go for the opening, and Natasha, maybe from the start, yeah? B4. Because we can try and work out. Let's do a diagnosis. Diagnosis <laughs> of murder, but murder for Black's position. What was the mistake? That's always been very important. You don't just look at a game, look at a position that's lost. Try and identify where the mistake was. Knight f6 looks normal. Um, knight bd7. So he's gone queen e2. I don't like the move knight b6. I feel that's no, I don't like queen b6 either. It feels a bit artificial. Um, I don't like the move knight g4 either. I feel these moves are artificial, they, they don't make sense. I think black should be trying to prepare some kind of e6. Break. E6 is he trying for, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't like knight g4. I mean, why not h3 for white after knight g4? You just kick the knight mm. back. I mean, you could have even played that before Black played H5. I don't really yeah. understand. So now he goes E5. Yeah, this is this is this is what I mean. You know, you got to analyze the game and look at the game. So, why has Black got such an absolutely terrible position? Well, because he played these very strange moves earlier in the game with Queen B6, also Knight BD7, possibly wrong as well because you're blocking in the Bishop on C8. That move doesn't make much sense to me. So look, why it's just building up, building up, creating more and more attack. Uh, more and more development, really increasing the advantage. But I think the decisive moment came earlier. Yeah. Really, uh, this is a bit of a sad position. If you're going to play dynamic openings like this, which are quite interesting openings, you've got to really be on your guard. You've got to play them perfectly because White and Black did not do that in this game. So checkmate, just with five seconds left. Yeah. Very poor, very poor, I'd say. Um, very poor. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, Pirate Gav. Oh, now this is a material imbalance. So we've got a um, rook and bishop against queen and pawn. Oh, yeah, oh, it looks completely woody for white. Um, well, having said that, you, you do have this past a pawn, but I think if White can, the first thing I would probably do as White is try to create some kind of lift on the king side, so you never get back rank made. So I play some move like I don't really uh, see the. Okay, he's trying to defend uh, d four, but I don't think that's really a relevant. Yeah, he's he's played this d three just to try and create this lift. So now it maybe gives Black a bit of hope because. Um... Yes. Well. I mean, he's still got his A pawn. This A pawn is, and Bishop C5 is a good move. So now the question is King G2, still winning for white, and must be because there's so many pawns. But maybe there's some glimmer of hope. Like Queen B5 is a good move. Yeah, and white only has six seconds, remember. Oh, well, he's going to lose. He's going to lose. Two, 
Why did he take so long? Play quicker. This is horrible. <laughs> this is shocking. You just got to play faster. I think people are trying to play. This is why they end up losing on time. They, they're trying to play too perfectly, Natasha. Right. Mm. You know, you're trying to play like Bobby Fischer in the 90s, early 1970s. Hi, Ocelot. Sounds like the booing is about to start, said Southern Chris. Yeah. Now, it's a tough ask this week, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> because now we are up to um, Division 3. It's only the top team that gets promoted. So it's not the top three teams anymore, but just the top one. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Well, where are we in the, in, 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 we're about fifth at the moment. Oh, we're not going to qualify them. We need a stronger team. We need to bring in new blood. <laughs> can, you, can you have foreign players in this league? Um, yeah, you can have whoever you like, um, but right. this team is restricted to members of the ECF. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I think we need to open it up. We need to, we, we need to be like that, that golf organisation, LIV. Have you heard of LIV? No. It's a no, new it's... golf organization, and it's uh, it's you know I follow golf a lot, unfortunately. Yes, I yeah. um, live live stands for uh, the number fifty four. So um, obviously you, using Roman numerals uh, because normal traditional golf tournaments are played. It seems to blunder a piece, by the way. Yeah, ninety four oh. is a blunder. Uh, played over over um, seventy two holes in stroke play events. Uh, but but Liv is played over 54 holes, trying to make it more exciting. And okay, also, a bit like 2020 cricket. Yeah, they're using all this Saudi money, and it's threatening to kind of blow the sport apart. Oh. Um, so, you know, like Newcastle, uh, Newcastle United, uh, Premier League side, yeah. um, sp sponsored as well by a, found, a Saudi sort of funded organisation. And obviously a lot of people are like, well, the, you know, this is wrong. Um, you know, the Saudis execute people, blah, blah, blah. Um, they're, they're not very good on human rights. They killed that journalist. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, but that's really changed the game of golf. So I think maybe we we could try and maybe we should email, somebody should email Lib and say, look, we're chess players. We don't have any morals. <laughs> you give us all your money. And uh, what about Rook F5? Well, rook f5, I think you could just move the queen because yeah. the problem is you can't really attack f7 that easily. So rook c1, uh, yeah, threatening queen g5, a big problem, a complete desperation move. You can just take back with it on g6. Well, Ed Sonia wants to sell out to the Saudis. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, they would have no compunction about buying. We, should, we, we shouldn't have an ECF only team. <laughs> We've got all these old dinosaurs like Keith and David Wilson. <laughs> Uh, we need young blood, you know. We need. We've got some real young ones though in this team. I'll, I'll take us to a young, a young player next. Yeah, we need a younger player. We, we we need to get rid of the, the Trinosaurus Rex. All right, we're gonna we're gonna stop this one with Henny Penny right now because I think he's in trouble. Um, so we'll go back. And right, so I'll tell you who's a young player. We did see a young player. Oh, look, come on, Eden Hazard. He's a young player. Oh, Max Pert, yeah, the yeah, famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sudo Benko, who we already saw as a young player, and also I think Liam Perry mm. Chesper, he's not playing. We need the young players to actually play. There might be other young players as well, but I just I don't always know. Um okay, so we'll go to another not young player. Um, sorry, Woodfisher. Apologies, Woodfisher. He's the same age as me. <laughs> Rooks on praise. Right, I think I've tried to fiddling around with a cam. Unfortunately, it's not going to work for this session, so I'll have to get back yeah. to my IP, IT person and consult my IT people. Yeah. My team. Team Gourmet. Team. Yeah. Rook C8. Because I know people love to see my beautiful visage. I mean, it's, it's of course they do. Why people tune into this? Yeah, yeah. A large part of it. So Queen C seven, I would try. But Queen C seven runs into Rook C one. I think I would probably try some move like Bishop D four at some point, just creating a lot of control um, and weakening the dark squares. 
But objectively speaking, this position is very equal. I don't think there's much going on here. Like Bishop D4, probably get away with taking that and then trading rooks. And there's not a lot really that I think the white has. Yeah. Um, because it can challenge the, D, the C file again, can't it? Yeah, I would probably, yeah, I would probably have taken on D4 first because then yeah. there was maybe a threat of taking on A3 later once you uh, offer the rook exchange. But uh, king takes looks normal, uh, so you, okay, it doesn't really matter, and then take. Um, so here for white, I mean, you could play some plan of H4 maybe. Uh, but I don't know if the really realistically an attack in the end game. Yeah, Queen C3, maybe some plan of F4 and E5 could be played. Mm. Now, Woodpusher is the higher rated. I think he'll carry on playing this. Yeah, King H2 is a good move. So he's found a good plan, which is to threaten Bishop H3. So yeah. the problem for Black is, uh, but that's a good move in reply because now Bishop H3 drops E4. Yeah. So. I don't know if White could go for an aggressive move like Queen C7, but then Queen D7 bats it back again. You could go F3, couldn't you? And then F3 the was a normal move. Yeah, I think F3 was a good. So what you should do is, is go back, Queen D7, go back again, and then go back to your F3 move, and then play this Bishop H3, and you'll yeah. start to make some progress. I think that's pro possibly a blunder because unless you got something good after Queen B7, maybe he wants to go Queen E2. In fact, Queen E2 now, Queen F3, Ooh. yeah, I mean, I think he's going for the mate, but I think Queen F3 creates a problem. So he wants to go Bishop E6. Now now Bishop E6 uh, is the idea, but... Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so... Uh, oh, now Bishop E6 now, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think Black should have allowed this. I think he could have just gone Queen F3 instead of taking on an E4. Thanks for the follow, Yosef BF. Um, now this is this is looking maybe too dangerous. I don't really see a good defence, so it's a bit careless to allow this because it's quite clear. Sometimes your opponent telegraphs your threats, Natasha. Like mm. clearly, well, he, he did all this stuff with um, Bishop H three. It's very clear that he wants to put the bishop on e six, and uh, Black just allowed it anyway. To, to me, that's very careless. I think you've got to try Queen F three for threatening counterplay with Queen takes F two. Because this is really quite bad for Black, isn't it? Because the threat's just Queen G eight. King H6, Queen well, H3. Yeah, mate. I don't see what you do about that. And um, there's also for Queen E7, but you don't really need it. I mean, uh, oh, okay, that's a good defensive try. But yeah. now Queen E7 is probably. Queen E7 and then Queen, queen E7. Because F6 eight. is going to drop. And that's that's the end of the game. Queen F6. Or Queen F8 is also winning. So. Now H, yes, that one. Yeah, but really poor. Really oh, nice. <laughs> well, really poor defensive play. I'm absolutely disgusted what, what <laughs> Black did there. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about the original King AJD? Yeah, I mean, why not? Why not? What do I mean is this? This looks sort of familiar. Ah, I'll tell you why. It's a King's Gambit. Oh, I was actually looking. Yeah, I do I actually play this. Knight c six is actually. If you go back a move, actually, knight c six is actually a reasonable move there because. Yeah, I'll tell you who played that against me. Uh, that was um, Sue Gawain's wife. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah like a, a couple of years ago, she, and she got very good. Well, she she won, I think. Well, well some good. some idea is to go g five, and uh, you know, which Black often does in the King's Gambit is to play yeah. g five to support them. I mean, Queen H4 is obviously a critical move here as well because you're forcing a white king to move. Queen H4, King F1. But when they do G5, it's not so scary against this line because you've just got H4. Oh, here we go. White yeah. resigned. Black is victorious. What happened there? They go back? I don't know, but it's only 11 moves, so we can see it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, F4. Looks okay so far. Yeah, it should be. A, a, I'm not sure about 95. Uh, yeah. Queen G4 is a blunder. Oh, that's on Priest. Okay. Blunder in the Queen, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think May obviously just misplayed it, yeah. But these things happen, unfortunately. Okay. Let's see. Um, Atomrod again. Yep. How's he getting on? How's the old geezer? playing against Woman Fide Master, Idrosa, Idrisova Rosa. 
This should probably be a draw, but Keith is like a master at getting like blood out of a stone. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's got a few, given her a few practical problems. In fact, Rook H2 was a move there instead of um, going Rook B2. Which is now definitely a draw, but he can still play this. Rook G2, maybe, was also possible there. But then H5. In fact, H5 now might be a move. But white, just if you can get rid of that pawn, because the problem yeah. is G5, you have Rook G2. No, that's a blunder, because now, now Rook G2. Um, oh, yeah. I felt such disappointment when he when <laughs> played Rook. <laughs> King F6. Actually, it's still not that easy because, uh, oh, no, it probably is easy. Yeah, he's, he's a master at these kind of technical endings, uh, and he plays them. This is what Keith likes the best. This is why he plays chess. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if you've got that knowledge of, of endings, he just serves you so often, and it seems to serve him very often. Ah, uh, but yeah, a bit careless. Oh uh, yeah, that's he did that because because the rook was going to come in. Oh, well, that's kind of a resignation, really. Um, but I, yeah, I think if you're taken on b7, you're probably still losing because uh, black would force through the g pawn or the or the f pawn. So yeah, it's pretty much the end of the game. So another end game. Okay. White had. But then he does win a lot of endings because people are making strange mistakes. If White had played just h5 there mm. instead of this stupid king g5 move, it would yep. have just been a draw. Like, you should not have lost that position. So you have to go away. Will she go away and say, actually, I've got a problem there with rook and pawn endings. I'm losing rook and pawn endgames I shouldn't lose. Or will she not bother to look at it? That'll be... That'll be the, do you know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's often, I think, what separates professional players from amateur players is if professional players know they've got a hole in their game, they're probably going to do a little bit of work. On they it. have to do it. It's their job. Well, you know, because amateur like, players have to do what they're told at work, but they can jolly yeah. well not analyse games if they want to. Well, Keith, Keith's actually got like a, a marvellous record in Rook and Bishop versus Rook, for example. Oh, yes, he has, doesn't he? Uh, which he's won apparently like 24 times out of 24 when he's had it in over the ball games. But at the same time, he's not had it 24 times out of 24 against Grand Masters or people yeah. who are very proficient in the Rook and Pawn. So he's winning them a lot of times because his opponent don't know how to draw them um, or they're not able to draw them under the practical conditions. And, and, but I think the other reason why he's good at that ending is because uh, he's a very patient player. When I was looking, I was yeah. looking at winning yesterday. Because uh, I had a few endings myself, uh, Rook and Bishop versus Rook. Like, for example, against Jonathan Hawkins, the last round of British Championships in 2008. And it's funny because I was trying to win, like, a decent prize, Natasha. I was trying mm. to – I got – I ended up with seven out of 11 unbeaten, right? I, I think I almost – I won, like, nothing or 50 quid. It just sums oh, up no. – oh. And I know that – if I won the last round, I would have won at least a grand or something like that. And I was playing mm. at the time was only rated about 2,200. And at some point, I did reach a winning position, this Rook and Bishop versus Rook. I didn't know how to win it. Glenn Fleer came over and he said, you could have done this, that, and that, <laughs> and uh, you would have won. I was like, please go away. Mm -hmm. I'm really pissed off. I don't care. Um, yeah. But, yeah. And then I afterwards, you studied it, right? Uh, well, I didn't really, but I didn't really study it yesterday. And um, when I was looking at the game, what occurred to me is you've got to be quite subtle at certain moments. You've got to wait. Um, sometimes you've got to be patient. You've got to wait, uh, push your opponent's rook to the wrong square and stuff like that. Stuff that I struggle with because it's quite patient kind of. Knight takes C2 as a blunder, yeah. Oh, yes. But that's why I think like Keith is, this is a point I was trying to make, uh, why Keith is good at that ending because he's a naturally very patient person. Knight takes yeah. B four is probably a better move, um, but yeah, I think like anybody, a really any chess player should know that ending, and should know all these technical endings. But even GMs like myself, uh, over the years, haven't necessarily studied it as much as we should have done. I should have known this ending like years ago. I've been a GM for like you know. So presumably Keith actually has studied it, and he's taken. Taking time. I think to... that he hasn't, but I mean, I think he probably has to some degree at some point in his life. But I think he could just work. You know, you can work a lot of this stuff out of the board. Yeah. Um, maybe he's had games like that earlier in his career and studied the games 
uh, studied that particular game. Uh, he also studies um, table bases and stuff like that. So he knows it, yeah. when yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, a lot of people, they claim, uh, you know, I don't study that or whatever. It's like, you know, it's like somebody wins Mastermind and like, oh, I just came off off the street. I never bothered to study any job. <laughs> I, just, I just knew it. I just knew it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, Richard Pert recommended Night C6. Yeah. Yeah, Richard Pert. the King's Gambit one, yeah. He, yeah, he's he's a bit of an expert, Richard Pert, in, um, in, in in the opening phase, actually. So he's like Keith, but with openings. I mean, he's like he's like the openings version of Keith, I should say. Night C6, right. Keith is an expert in the, in the end games, but Richard is an expert in the, in the opening. And you tend to get more experts. I, I do. If you probably would you would you agree with me here, Natasha? You tend to get a lot more experts um, in the in the opening phase in chess than you yeah. do in the end game phase. Why do you think that is? Bishop A three is a good move because yeah, you just went in the rook. Now you could even go yeah, knight C four is killer move. Why do you think that is? That the more people are. Well, I think you might get different experts in different openings you know like you'd get an expert in the french defense and an expert in the dutch or something whereas yeah. end games probably everyone's a little bit more general well you might maybe maybe there should be like experts in knight endings and experts in bishop endings you could create a website for coaching and just have certain coaches for certain subjects like you yeah. know, a Sicilian expert you could have an end game expert you could have a you know, a, a blundering my queen expert, like <laughs> I mean, ecology uh, expert. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I feel that a lot of um, players find the end game. I know I did for many years. I found the end game and technical side of chess a little bit boring, and now I'm only starting to realise that's just held me back to a large degree. That yes. I should have really spent more time studying the end game than I did. I mean, Queen E seven is a move here. I would I would consider as black, just 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 to hit the rook, and then with the rook moves, you've got this F six move. Uh, otherwise, E five is always going to be attacked, so that would give you the opportunity. To, you don't have to play that move. I mean, A six is probably perfectly reasonable. Uh, rook A three, uh, Rook A one, that's a good move. Um. Yeah, so I think you need to study uh, end games. Uh, I think the the junior players that start off learning the end games and they know those, they mm. do very well, don't they? In like in in junior tournaments, if they know they can just swap off, because there'll be so many of the kids that aren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it gives you an edge, doesn't it? You know. Yeah. I mean, it's like. I mean, we were talking about Magnus Carlsen the other day, and mm. I think that Magnus Carlsen, it's a shame that he's not playing the World Championships because whoever wins out of Ding and Nepo, they're just not as exciting a players as Magnus is. The way he plays the game, the knowledge that he brings to the game, when you see these endings, what you think they're going to be drawn, and and and, and somehow he manages to weed out a mm. win. It's like Keith, but a higher level. You know, it's like, yeah. like you know, Super, super GM weekenders or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, he's very impressive. And as, though those players are good players, there's nothing particularly unique about them, whereas I think there's something a bit unique and exciting about Magnus that you, I don't really feel that you get out from any other player at the moment. So I think it is a shame and a kind of a tragedy. And I think actually when I saw an interview with Nep Nepomniachi the other day, uh, he looked shell shocked. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, because I think he feels that you know winning the world championship without Magnus is not the same thing. You know, you're always going to have that kind of thing over you that actually you're not a genuine world champion. Um, so I think it's a bit of a shame for those guys as well. Yeah, but why it's gradually making progress? There? The problem with Black is got no real counterplay. So maybe F4 is coming. Yeah, I think if, I think Ben's going to get in F4. Can Black go B five and C four and just try and create some kind of counterplay? And just just randomize. That's what oh, he's that's doing. That's what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. But Tate, yeah. He could also play, throw in C three there. He could have maybe gone C three because on the rook move you had Queen C five. But I don't know. But then D three would have been hanging at the end anyway. 
So F4 is logical. Um, so he's taken Queen E6 maybe or Queen G5 makes a lot of sense. Um, so if H4, Queen F3, maybe F6 by black. Oh, yeah. He's done it. Yeah, so Rook F5, Rook G4. Now Queen E5 I would probably try. Yeah, they're playing all the correct moves. It's a really impressive game, actually. Rook F1. Yeah, but now, maybe, now you can take on F6. Oh, maybe you can take, and take on D3. Maybe it's not yeah. that bad. I think you should take on F6 anyway. And then you have... So I think it's probably going to end up being sort of drawish. But Yeah. So if you take on F6, you've got to do it fairly quickly. You're going to lose your time advantage. And then take on D3. Uh, take back rook take. I would probably play me like h4. Just h4, to... yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get mated. Get or, or rook back to f2. Ooh, Ooh, I don't know. Dangerous, yeah. dangerous. Yeah, I feel like there's going to be a rook d2 check now. And then... Now h4. But you could have gone rook d2 first, forced the king back yeah. to the back rank, and then play the same idea as probably. Yeah, really... yeah, that would have been better. But maybe there was a rook f6 anyway, so you could have gone like. Oh, the rook goes. It's still okay. Maybe Rook G3 was. Oh no, but now Rook is in on H6. But he's gonna he's gonna win on time white. Maybe no, no, Black's fast. He's got. It's gonna be at worst a draw for Black. Oh, he's, he is fast. He's very fast. Two, now one, he's six, down. One, now he's go down again. <laughs> he's, why is he not taking the pawn? Just take the pawn. He's gonna lose it on time. I swear to you, he will lose on time. No, he's, he's oh, oh unlucky Ben. Wow. That's incredible. What a game. What a game. Can we okay. vote out the best game ever played? <laughs> okay, right. Um Sugar Rune. Right. Threatening to take on um E three. Yeah. So is our guy our guy's black in this one, is he? Yeah, that's right. Can you go? Yeah, I don't see a good move because A2's hanging as well. Yeah. Maybe black should just go G6. Yeah. It's not these improving moves. You sort out a bat rank. I would just go G6. I wouldn't even think about it. But, I mean, uh, probably there's a better move, which is knight D3. Oh, knight H3, yeah. Yeah. This is... Knight H3 is actually a killer. Yeah, that's really impressive yeah. tactic. But I would have gone G6 anyway because I'm a sadist. I would have said, well, <laughs> I'm going to go knight for anyway, but I'll just sort my king out first. Yeah, you know, that's why someone like Carpal was such a good player because he just sort of like made all these quiet, improving moves. Yeah. And uh, okay, in this certain position, you don't need it. So it's a lot of, uh, you know, like when we need patience, we don't necessarily need to be patient here because we're just winning directly, right? Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, maybe now you could just take on G4 or something. And you've got multiple yeah. threats. Now Hugo needs to be quick. I think he's going to lose on time. I think White will find Bishop G. Yeah, then he'll go Knight G3. Knight G3 now, we need H5. Don't move the king, because you move the king, he's always hanging. Yeah, now H5 for H5. black or something. Knight. He's going to lose on time, I reckon. He's just got to be quick. White will play something like Queen F5. Nah, mm. I'm not sure about that, because H4 now. Yeah. Yeah, I think you had to try queen f5 and try and get the queens off or something. Because now you just get, you're probably going to get mated. So yeah, he's, he's, his time advantage is slipping away as well. So it's, it's gone from bad to worse. I'll have to do a song in a minute. Oh, yes. Yes, Danny. Can someone, someone nominate me a song to sing in the chat? Yeah, and then I'll sing. I'll sing what a song. song. Would you like Danny? To well, if, if they don't, you'll, you'll, you'll have to nominate. I think it. one. Yeah. Uh, here's Wilsonia. Wilsonia's joined, and Ushko. Let's see Ushko the bear. Who has berserk? Oh, that's Blair, isn't it? That's Blair. Wasn't Ushko the bear the? Um, wasn't he the mascot in the uh, Moscow Olympiad in 1980? Oh, was he? Or my figure them. I don't know. I'm, 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 where, where's his handle come from? Why? Why? Ushka why? Ushka the bear? The bear. I don't know. Maybe there was, was Mish, Mish, let, me, let me find out the the, the, yeah. the mascot. There was a there was a bear yeah. that was a mascot. Yeah. 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 
I think it was called Ushka the Bear. No, it's Misha. It was Misha. Ah. So Ushka. No, I don't know. Who is Ushka the Bear? How do you spell it? Oh, Ushko the Bear. Who is Ushko the Bear? You get Blair Connell. That's what oh, you get. Oh, right. There is a there, there was a there was a, a bear called uh, Ushko, uh, which is Greece's first bear to use a wheelchair. Oh, um, so it it, it uh, was found injured and paralysed. So maybe oh, there's some similarities. We've got a song for you, Bear Necessities. Oh, the Bear Necessities. Yes, oh, yes Southern about. Chris has nominated. Oh, because of Ushko the Bear. Really come up with a good suggestion. <laughs> but the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife. Yeah, but man. the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. About the worry, uh, wherever I wander, wherever I go. Yeah, I remember that from the film when I was a kid. If you I can't really remember the words. Too long. Or a prickly pear, and you pick a raw paw. Next time, be aware. Don't pick the prickly pear with the paw. When you pick the pear, try to use the claw. I think you can remember the words better, but I'm I know not the sure words. About the I know the words. I learned them all up with. Um, do you remember Julie Harwar? She taught me all the words of their necessity. Oh look, Ocelot's muted the. <laughs> he's muted the stream. What's that? Ocelot muted the stream. Oh, he's muted. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's not a good idea because the whole point is to provide commentary. <laughs> um, it, well, Ocelot, if Ocelot, you can nominate a song that you might find. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can do, you can do a request, Ocelot, if you like. Well, you could nominate a song for Ocelot will want cat songs. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I can do Lloyd Webber. Go on then, go on then. Shall I do uh, one from Phantom of the Opera? Yeah. Night time, hide. Heightens each emotion, Aiden. Wakes imagination, silently the senses, abandon their defenses. Do 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 do. And listen to the music of the night. <laughs> Very good. Right, what about, let's song. see, Smooth Baron. Oh, Smooth Baron, yeah, yes. yeah, that name rings a bell. The Smooth Hedgehog, which is Andy Hall. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Smooth, no, Smooth as a Hedgehog. So, in other words, it's not, you know, it's kind of been ironic, I suppose, with that. Uh, this looks like another, is this another King's Gambit? No, it can't be King's Gambit because White hasn't pushed his F ball. But it kind of looks like a similar kind of opening. Is it maybe it's a Tromposky? Um, this thing. No, it's some there kind of like that. Uh, weird kind of modern. Modern. Okay, so White's just played. Oh wow! So let's come up with a big Ooh, sack. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I got worried for a moment. I don't like that sack though. I don't really see the point in giving all your pieces away. Isn't that allowing just castles? No, Queen F two. Now that was a blunder. We could have just castled. Going. Russia. Yeah. In fact, yeah, would take G six instead of Queen H six. If you go back, can you go back a couple? Yeah, of yeah. There? There's a tactic there which he kind of lined up when he went Rook G one. So and black kind of fell in. He should never have taken on D four. Um, yeah, after C five, here we go. There was rook takes G six, which I mean was immediately crushing. Can I actually play the move? No, I can just do an if, arrow. If you take, I have ninety seven check. I pick up the queen, but even just castles. Queen oh, that's there. you were quick there, Danny. That's a good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a complicated one, but still, it was yeah. Yeah, but I think that would have ended the game because then if you move the king, I have queen h6 anyway, um, or rook h6. So you have to take, and then I just win the queen. But even just castle's queen side, even if you don't see that tactic, just castle queen side was very strong. And now somehow he's allowed this, which is really careless. But actually somehow, I don't know what's happened here. This is a, I don't know what's happened because I thought black was just going to win on the spot. Well, it's still a bit ominous, yes. though, because yeah. c is a threat. C2's Unless he's right. 7 I don't think it does that much. You just go king of seven. Chicks are going to run out fairly quickly. We've come up with a stunning defence. 
93. Three, hitting the queen. Uh, it's actually very clever. And uh, really, uh, she's not so clear what black should do now. Because the problem is if you move the queen up, queen g6 with serious play. Yeah. It's a really nasty move there, 94. Good on smooth, Baron. That's a good defense. Yeah, that's clear. But the guy is 2,400, actually. Look at his rating. Yeah, yeah. He's strong. He's actually a fairly decent player. Oh, wow. He's even like oh, dingy. But he's got in a... Yeah. Yeah, but now he can take on g6 and take on e6. Yeah. I guess that's what he'll do. But if you take on g6 and take on e6, I have a rook c2 check. And if you take on e6 and take on g6, I have... So King F8 now for Black, which he should play instantly. But he's, so Bishop to E6, I have now Rook C2 check. Which leads to mate. But what else can you play? Because yeah. if you go, uh, you haven't got any Queen checks uh, covering all the squares. So maybe he'll play Bishop D3 and just... What about Rook F1? Rook F1, yeah, yeah, you can. But I can just trade, I guess, and then I'm out of danger. Um... So it should be consolidating winning. Yeah, he's tried his very clever defense. But he's... B5 is a good move for Black. Freddie, B4, mate. B5 for Black. Come on, Black. Play B. Oh, no, actually, we should yeah. be cheering on Smooth Baron. <laughs> I never cheer on our guys. As you know, I just. <laughs> That's true. I'm, I'm like one of these people, like, you know, this is why I always cheer against Keith. Is, uh... <laughs> actually, Queen E5 is very strong as well because you're now Freddie Knight B5. Knight B5, mate, on the board. Will be played, I think. Oh gosh, you found it. That's me. <sighs> yeah, so he got a little bit careless. You just win that game. Look, Will Smooth Baron go away, look at that game, and say, "Look, I screwed up there. I could have just castled. I could have just gone Rook G six. I got careless with Queen H six. I would never do that again. I don't think he will. I think you get given that same situation, he's probably going to do the same thing again. Is Smooth Baron a younger player? No. No, no. Um, no hope for him then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding, guys. I love you all, really. I'm just, yeah, it's this Gore Vidal joke where he said, uh, uh, sorry, not joke. Um, have you heard his Gore Vidal quote? Kind of sums up my life, actually. Have you heard it? Uh, tell me what it is. You pr well, Okay, you haven't heard it. Though. It's this famous one where he says, uh, every time my friends succeed, a little part of me dies inside oh yeah oh that's kind of how i feel like i don't yeah i don't know what it is but i think like chess players are very competitive so they don't like you, you like a little bit of success from your friends but you don't want them doing too well yeah if that makes sense i think black has enough conversation to hold this but it has to have to play very now maybe bishop f1 is a threat bishop f1 is to, yeah and now this G uh, G pawn is weak, and then uh, you're going to come around with a bishop and attack f3. So smooth baron is Graham Waddingham. Bishop e3 is a really good move, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, actually, b5, go back a move there, Natasha. Go back a move. Um, b5 was a move that maybe was leading to a draw. It would be five here. Yeah, because if you... I know oh, you, oh, you can take four. it. Sorry, I'm talking nonsense. You can take on b5, sorry. Okay. Because my idea was a bishop c5, yeah, bishop c4. But yeah, what he's done is probably better than. So now, if you take, it's, it should be a draw, but why can still. Bishop d5, bishop a2, yeah, it's just a draw, yeah. <coughs> Good stuff. Square take is going to play. And try and get the king in. Oh, okay. He might yeah. manage. He might manage, you know. Well, he, he should manage, but I mean, why should be able to draw anywhere unless somebody loses? He's been a bit careless. I mean, what he could do, for example, he could go bishop e7, f5, and then somehow, yeah, actually, you can still play that. Yeah. So this is, I think, yeah, practically a lot of people give up on the opposite color bishops ending too, too quickly. Assume that it's always going to be a draw. Maybe I would have gone King G2 there immediately, right? And just... Mm -hmm. uh, but has White got any simple way to, to hold it? Maybe he doesn't, no? Okay, he's gone active, which I don't really agree, necessarily agree with. Yeah, so he... Ah, oh, okay, yeah, so he's going to H... This is the H problem. Without that move... Uh, in fact, he should have just gone H4 immediately. 
Possibly. I mean, maybe h4, you take on f5. And now take on f4. Yeah, take on f4, but also also uh, king, king g3 anyway in h2. So again, we yeah. see now the time. I think if White had more time there, he probably would have drawn this ending. Uh, but with, without the time, he had no chance. Yeah. Oh, but well, now you got the wrong rook. What did you do that for? You could have taken on b5 with a board. Yeah. yeah. I think this might even end up being a draw now. Yeah. I think he'll win on time. Yeah, no, he should win on time. Yeah, because, um, yeah. He's a little bit lucky there because it's wrong. Yeah, it. He could have just gone a, b, take, take it with a pawn rather than a bishop. And then you've had a pass b pawn, so you wouldn't have had to worry about the wrong rook's pawn. Right, we have Piscatorox. Now, Piscatorox was the player who created that. Um, Joseph Conlon. Exactly. Uh, the yeah, he's user. on Twitter. Is, is another Twitter addict. <laughs> yeah, the Twitter addicts everywhere. Maybe we've got Bishop H4 here, Natasha. Just, oh, wow. Great tactic. Queen F5 check, and if Knight F6 and G5, will okay. White find this Queen F5 move? He's yes. found it. Oh, yes. that's problems. Problems. Yeah, I mean, the problem with the King's Indian is when you lose a light square bishop, your attacking chances often go down quite a bit. Um, one at g5 there. We I mean, well, g5 anyway here would, is yeah. Russian. Yeah, he's found yeah. it now. This is obviously at the end of the game. But why it's quite a lowly rated player, so he, he may still have some hopes. Take on f6. Uh, he's taken too long here. This is why these players screw up. Uh, queen h7 check should be good enough. Uh, Bishop d7 is a star move as well, but he's going to lose on time. I mean, he will lose this on now. He can take on h4, that's what he's trying. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he's just it's just too slow. These players, I feel like people are slow at blitz. You know what they should do, Natasha? Yeah, tell me because I am. I think you should just play loads and loads of bullet and loads and loads of. Um, I've never played bullet ever. You got to play bullet, and you got to play loads and loads of puzzle rush because I feel like with a the lot puzzle of puzzle rush, I like, but not quick. I like I just do the slow one. You got to do the quick version. You got to speed yourself right. up so you can yeah. just do stuff subconsciously, because otherwise you never have that ability to just pump out a load of moves really quickly, and you're always going to be vulnerable if you get short time. I mean, I'm I find when I play bullet, I play people. I'm not slow but i play people so they're so quick it's unbelievable you know yes. it's, it's almost like a form of cheating how fast they are but you know it's part of the game um but yeah it, it's just it's just your sub you're just playing subconsciously without even thinking so now why well, be careful because you cast the queen side bishop g5 was winning so yeah he's gone f4 i would take on f4 i'll take on f4 that's what he played yeah try and open up the game uh, I might have gone bishop d5 there instead of knight f6 to prevent white from cast. Now white should cast from queenside, uh, which is kind of the whole point of this system. There might be tricks, might there? This, this kind of systems where white goes b3 and puts knight on c3 and castles queenside has become very popular recently. I think Magnus has played it. Mm. Um, but but I think he's kind of delayed it a bit. He could have just cast the queen side earlier. Now he's allowed Black to get some play, but he can still cast the queen side here, maybe. Because uh, knight f3, gf3, bishop g5, there was an f4 move. Um, yeah, I think White's delayed too long. Now bishop h4 check. Now your king's going to be stuck in the center. Oh, yeah. you got to be careful because rook g7 is a threat. So bishop f6. Bishop g5. Okay. Yes, yeah, good chess. Bishop f6 is a good move. Um, maybe a c4 by white, f6, maybe just to defend, or g6. Yeah, very sensible. A king c2, maybe uh, black should, yeah, queen h4 is a good move. I mean, that's clever, just restraining white. Um, I don't like a5 that I would always go for like, yeah, but he can he can block it. I would have gone b5, I would have gone for like b5 or c6. Trying to open it up, you know, but maybe that was wrong. I don't know. Uh, he's going to double on the A file and uh, 
And actually, White hasn't got a rook to challenge. No, I mean, uh, look at that bishop on f1. It's a really bad. Uh, well, now he's lost the queen as well. So White mm. Black's play has actually been really impressive here. It's been very. He's actually played pretty strong, a lot stronger than I would have played this position. It'd be very methodical the way he played the game. So was that a black was Argyle or was White? No, uh, White was Argyle. Ah, exactly. Uh -huh. Unlucky. Really get that other guy in. Get the checkbook out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so Nigel Towers, get the checkbook out. That guy <laughs> who just beat our guy. Very impressive. <laughs> get rid of our guy. <laughs> Don't answer reply to his emails. <laughs> Cut him out of society. <laughs> Cancel him and put the other guy in. Soon. No, I'm only kidding. Okay, um, Rook takes. Yeah, this should another be another opposite bishop ending. But this really yeah, should. We're getting be. a lot of them tonight. Um. Oh, okay. This is Keith, right? Yeah, oh, it is. Of course, it is. Keith's yeah. endgame skills may not be enough to win this, but uh, maybe King e4 now. No, okay. So e5. So bishop. Yeah, bishop e1 is often a good technique as well. You just mine the pawns. Um. I believe White still has some hope here. Uh, can you even go bishop e1 now? No, maybe the king is a little bit passive on the side of the board here. Yeah. But it still might not be enough. It shouldn't be enough because f4 you can't go because you can take – when you take on f4, which I failed to appreciate yeah. earlier, is, is check. Yeah. But, so now um, – We have to get – oh, so even if we go king f5, king g3, we just go bishop c6 defending it. In fact, after F3, sure. Black had E4 check, Patash. If you go back a couple of moves. Um, yeah. Yeah, E4 oh, was e better for Black, maybe. <gasps> and then take. Maybe that was it's... even winning for Black, you know. Gosh. Maybe not winning, but certainly would have been chances. Uh, but now it should be a draw again. So it got a little bit careless being F3 because uh, probably should be a draw, yeah? Yeah. It looks like a draw. He's gone F4 though. He's, he's gone for it. So he's going for the. Uh, he's going for the. Um... Yeah, Keith is determined to get back over 2,500. He's he's very determined. Uh, he's a very ambitious player. I could have played F6, say, yeah. But actually, Black has played it. a very good defensive method of just basically just doing nothing. And now yeah. White cannot make progress. There's nothing to be done. Yeah, and Black's been quite careful. He's not. Really he's good. trying quite hard, though. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it will be a draw, this, unless Black blunders the bishop, which he shouldn't do. Um, but yeah, Keith is quite determined to get back over 2,500. Yeah. Do you think he has a chance, or, or do you think. Over 2,500? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think he has a chance. I don't think it'll be easy because I think um, there's so many underrated players now. There's so many yeah, good juniors. You have to be careful where you play. What I notice when I play on a circuit now, like the English chess circuit, or what English, there aren't that, that many tournaments. I think that's part of the problem with being a chess professional, in my opinion, is there not is not really a circuit. Yeah. You know, it's not like other sports. Like if you like golf, you, right? It's a tournament every week. You know, like it used to be that, like way way back. When we were teen, or when I was a teenager, anyway. Oh, when I was a kid. When I was a. When I was young. When I was a child, <laughs> there, were, there were tournaments every week. <laughs> Maybe after Bishop B five, you got some knight D three tactic. <coughs> um, you might have a knight D three coming in some point, but but yeah, I feel like um, the problem is, yeah, you play in a circuit, and there's there's lots of uh, underrated sort of uh, juniors, so it, it is tricky. Um, and some of the adult players are kind of underrated as well. Your knight d3 is a clever tactic. But where, I think the problem is you could take and go rookie for. So it doesn't quite work in. Now the rook's taken on. on uh, so suddenly black ends up in the worst end game. Like rookie for. It might not be so simple because black has this outside pass pawn. So black still has some, some yeah. hope there. <clears throat> Yeah, it'd be nice if you had a recognised circuit, but I think the problem is that um, uh, so as Ocelot said, will you be played? Or I won't be commentator this year. I, I feel like I should play because I feel that like I'm too strong to really be a commentator. Um, you know, maybe when I'm 60... I did commentate before with Adam Hub, which I really enjoyed, but I, I did kind of have this sense of regret. Um 
later on that I should have played maybe. And uh, I don't feel that's a good thing to, to have that. Yeah. You, you kind of, um, you want to be in a good state of mind that you feel like you gave it your best possible shot. But I, I will I will be doing some commentary. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Natasha will be doing some commentary. The thing is, I can I I, I rugby four rugby four rugby Natasha. Four, yeah. Rugby, yeah, yeah. I can commentate and also do work, whereas I couldn't play and work at the same time. Yeah, yeah. What what will he, what would on time? Sorry, White Swan um, on time. Well done, Ferrari fan. Yeah, I think part of the problem is Natasha is, is finding, um, you know. As sponsors or whatever uh, that are willing uh, to, um, or, or should I say, organisers that are willing to, um, Bishop A5, maybe. Yeah, Bishop A5 is a clever move. Yeah. Um, there might be a tactic here for what? Maybe 95. Yeah, that's a good try. But um, Bishop B6 check, maybe I would throw in. That's what he's done. Maybe you could take and go, can go Bishop, yeah. Bishop some praise. Yeah, but then Bishop G2, mate. So it's Bishop quite a clever tactic. Oh, there's another rook here. Yeah, this one. Yeah, it's just lining up as if it's a pawn. Yeah, it yeah. It's, it's it's a very clever tactic uh, by the great Neshi. We like it, yes. He's named after the famous player. Rashid Neshitamov or something like that. It was from the Soviet Union back in the 1930s or something, 1940s. I can't remember. I'm not really a great chess historian. Um, maybe there's some stunning moves here. It feels like knight b4 might be a move or knight takes e5 is also a move. Okay. Yeah, knight takes e5. We should take e5 and then maybe you can take on g2. Rook takes g2 and go rook d2. And after rook g1, our bishop takes g2, yes. rook takes g2, our rook bishop's g1. Got rook this g1, diagonal rook under control, so you can't. So you should take on e5 rook and take on g2. Get rid of those arrows first and do takes, yeah. takes, and then this clever move, rook g2 from Danny. Yeah. Takes, and then here, with the aim of that. Uh, he's played a wet move. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's played a wet move. Uh, boo, boo, <laughs> boo. Crowd doesn't like that, but it's still a problem for White because if you if you go back, you're going to have. But now, yeah, Bishop G3 creates a lot of um, stops a lot of the pressure. So sometimes chess is about. Yeah, but you kind of think one. there'll be a no. There's a, there must be a tactic here of taking on G3 and then a rook onto the H file. Possibly was good. Yeah, possibly was good. No, you're probably right. That was probably just winning. But there was maybe a rook F4, Natasha. Yeah. You could, you could have taken and taken on G. So no, no, Rook G5 lines it up. Okay. Oh, but the knight will recapture. The knight's defending. So now White is trying to hold on for dear life. Well, no, no. Oh. oh Rook oh, takes, oh, oh. Yeah, takes a five. Rook, Rook F5 White. still doesn't quite work. Uh, maybe you should just take the pawn on A2. Just just, just yeah. grab the pawn. Maybe then. stop trying to find clever tactics and just... Uh, well, I think, the, I think that moment they're gone. You know, the moment they passed. Yeah. So you just, you just take on, on, on A2. Just take a pawn, you know. And, um, I mean, probably there was a force win there anyway, but... Sometimes you just got to play the practical move. Now he's defended the ball. H5 still difficult for White to to play because now that it feels like yeah, Rook G4, Black is getting in. Rook G4, Bishop F6, Before, Rook, yeah. Rook F4, maybe. Uh, so I would try. I would try Rook G4. Yeah, he's, he's played it. So Bishop F6 now, then Rook F4. Oh, okay. H3, very clever. No, he's oh, mate in one. Not very clever. <laughs> mate in one. Well done, VKT Chess. Um, okay, we're going to see Pirate Gav. No, nope. we're going to see um, the original king. Remember, the original king was Elvis, so I need to do an Elvis song. <laughs> oh, good. Yes, let's see. Um, how about... Um, Blue suede shoes. No, I don't. I don't know that one. Do another one. Um, suspicious minds. Oh, that's a better one. We're caught in a trap. 
I can't walk out because I love you too much, baby. Why can't you see what you're doing to me when you can't believe a word I say? We can go on together with suspicious minds. We just can't just build our bridges. Oh. Wasn't Queen D3 mate? Queen D3 was mate, yeah. Maybe he's got suspicious minds. Uh huh. So apparently, there's a new biopic out about um, Elvis Presley, Natasha. Oh, really? Yeah, it's it stars um, a guy called Austin Butler as Elvis. It's by the director Baz Luhrmann, the same guy who did Moon on Rouge. Another. Well done, original king. And Priscilla, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, I think, and uh, also stars Tom Hanks. As, I like that film, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. I've seen that several times. Yeah, it stars the uh, same guy, Guy Pierce from Neighbours, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, the chap from Neighbours. And uh, Neighbours actually is ending as well. Did you ever watch Neighbours when you were younger? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Maybe I should do especially for you, because I was watching it earlier on YouTube. <laughs> I sang that actually to a friend of mine when I was at school, and she reminded me of it. So he said, "Oh yeah," so he was he's watching it on top of the pops with her daughter. She said, "When I was at school, this guy sang it to me," and that was you. And that was me. And oh, uh, yeah. And then her daughter said, "Well, maybe he fancies you." Mm. you know? Especially for you. I want to let you know what I've been going through. All the nights we were together, me and you. You were in my arms. You showed me the way. There's going to be much interest. More interested in singing than the chess, I have to admit. Maybe mm. <laughs> But C2's hanging here, Natasha. So oh, like King's Crushers, C2. Yeah, C2 is uh, hanging. So it's actually not that clear. Knight B4 maybe threatening to take on D3. Um, no, we got Knight. Oh no, D yes D3. Can't really defend it actually. Yeah, King's. Yeah, he's going for the Bishop F6 is a good defensive move. Just defend everything. Yeah, he's, we found it very impressive move. And now uh, Knight takes D3. Just grab the pawn. Don't even need to think about it. Well, I would have preferred Knight takes because I think that would have threatened. Uh, Knight B to um, always take with a knight. Bring the bring the yeah. White could have maybe gone a three there and kicked the knight back to an inadequate square. Now rook D two. Suddenly, what a black's back in in control again. Aha, uh -huh. King's Crusher is ninety uh, four, uh, but ninety four there was a rook h two. So I, I, yeah, I kind of feel like that's King's Crush is one of our guys, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Trifon. Trifon. Yeah, Gilbert. yeah. I, I know who it is. I just want to where we play for our team. Oh yes, he is. He's playing for us. He's a big English, yeah, English guy. Yeah, he'd probably be playing the uh, watching. He's like the original streamer, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. One of the original streamers. Yeah, on you. Yeah, he's like got a big following on YouTube, mm. and. Um, yeah, I feel like that sort of stuff is important to sell books and stuff as well. You know, like uh, if you've got a big following on, on, on YouTube or on Twitch or whatever, or on social yeah. media, um, it's probably a lot easier to sell your stuff. So I don't really know what Black is doing here. I feel like he's, yeah, misplaying this horribly because now he's, he's dropped the knight, the rook. That's really careless. Um, controlling the game is often like a key element. And Black really didn't control the game yeah. very well there. And Trifon's very, very fast. Trifon is very good. One minute he's very tough to beat. Yeah. Because he just he just plays so many moves so quickly. <laughs> Bill comes for the chess, but we'll cheer for the songs. Thank you, Bill. Cheer, cheer for the songs. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you should donate for the song. Every time I sing a song, people should be forced to donate. Bill, you can Bill, have you got any requests for Danny to sing? He probably doesn't. He's he probably his request is that I don't sing. <laughs> you know, Let's see, like, playing. I'm going to just try some of these in case. It, okay, we have one here. Um, C M Lucas eight. 
So maybe uh, just rook f no knight d two, but then queen a five. This is creating a problem for white. So it's, it's interesting play by black. It should be for queen a five is a good move now. Just because um, if bishop f six, I just take back. So queen a five really creates a big problem because he, yeah, he's, he's found it. Maybe you can go b a three, bishop takes, and then b four, um, and then uh, give up the because uh, if you then take twice on b four, I have a bishop f six and a rook a six. So I think a for, uh, yeah I think Bishop C one's too passive, too passive there. Um, so I think a three was the only try. Oh, a three if a three Bishop D two B four yeah. Queen A four was possible with the idea Queen takes D two Rook C two but then I think Queen D four was still okay. So yeah, this is just bad. Oh, this for is right lost. Now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you think he'll go away there and say Queen A5? Do you think he'll bother an analyze this game? I don't think he will. I must say, after these, um, after the league games, I don't normally go back and look at my games after. No, I mean, I, I, that's the thing. I, I play a lot of Blitz online, and, and this really uh, very few of the games I actually bother to analyze. Maybe what I should do, or what people should do in general, is have <laughs> a limited session, say, play yeah. 10 games. And then analyze all 10 games and have a look at them and say, well, what did I do wrong there? You know? Yeah. Like the lower the level that you're starting from, probably the more mistakes you're going to make. And therefore, e the easier it is to see actually, yeah, I'm doing this wrong. And this is what I should be um, working on in my chess. You know, like that last game when Black went Queen A5, how did I solve that? I played a passive move. And solve it. I didn't come up with a tactical solution with A3. Gormali's genius A3 move, I didn't find it. I feel embarrassed. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think after A3, that last game with Tashi, could have got yeah. Bishop E2, B4. Maybe he could have given up the Queen, got Bishop E1, take it on A5, Bishop takes A5. This is also an interesting idea. Because then Black gets a lot of play, got Rook at a Bishop for the, uh, for the Queen, Rook at a Knight, sorry. And then he can go bishop b6, knight g4 kind of ideas and get a lot of play. But I don't know. But at least it would have been more interesting in the game. Mm. This is looking good for black, right? Yes. Oh, goodness. Have you just seen the rating? I've just seen the rating. FM. Wow. 2707 wow. is the black. Wow. What, a, wow. what a play. 2707. That's like a, that's like a, that's like a VIP guy in this kind of league. They, they, they probably have like red carpets and stuff for players like yes. this. FM Rob, where's he from? I think he's from Netherlands, maybe. Let's see. Um, Yerevan. Yerevan. Chester. Oh, Yerevan. What's his name? Can you look up his handle? He's going to win. Yeah, anyway. Let's this. see. I'm going to open it. There's an awful lot of FMs that are very, very good at Blitz, I've noticed. Robert Philip Sion. How do you... P-H-I... Oh, sorry. How do you spell it? P-I-L-P... P I L I P O S Y A N. Philipposian uh, is going to be my second attempt at saying that. Do, 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 do. Well, Square Tick is managing to stay in the game a long time against him. Rob 188. Um, Let me just look up his handle. It might be easier. 188. Um. He's 2280, so he's pretty good at blitz for 22. Let me look up his age. Yeah. Um, I bet he's a younger player. I bet he is as well. Yeah, he's 2007, so he's 15. So he's probably underrated at blitz. I mean, he says his blitz is 2231. Now, if you consider 2700, in my opinion, 27, there's a lot of GMs who are, who, I mean, I'm probably about 27. Something. What, what's my hat? My, my rating on Nietzsche. I've been over twenty eight hundred before, but I think in a moment. Have you I'm, over twenty eight hundred? That's pretty. I've been good. over twenty eight hundred. I've been about as high as twenty eight forty. But um, sorry, I was looking at somebody. Uh, yeah, I think I'm about twenty seven hundred now. I'm twenty seven fifty one. I dropped quite a bit. So this guy's similar. Right? He's higher than me. He's uh, sorry, higher than Keith. Mm. Uh, he's higher than people like Simon. He's he's similar rating to me. But yeah, he's 2,200, you know. So is that because, yeah, when you look at his FIDE Blitz, he hasn't played much FIDE Blitz. Yeah. 
So he probably he might, maybe because he maybe he just hasn't played much classical. Like he's really he probably hasn't played much classical. I think a lot of people haven't football. played much since the pandemic. So you, you do have a lot of FMs I've noticed online. For some reason, whatever reason, a lot of them are FM because the FMs tend to be the people, younger people, who haven't quite um, played enough chess and are very ambitious to get to GM, IM, and whatever. Uh, but they haven't quite managed to play enough chess to get there yet. And uh, so what this game, Mouse Slip, Mouse Slip's our guy, right? Yeah. Mouse Slip's Patrick Duncan. He's putting up a decent fight here, but I think Black could possibly just take and go 94 or 94 directly is, yeah, quite a decent idea. Black clearly has a very strong initiative on the, probably just take on a, a B3 is good at some point. Um, yeah, I don't think Queen H3 is that. I think Black could just call the bluff and take on B3. Just take on B3. Because I think Queen H3 can always meet with an F6, and I think you're going to run away. So whether he will try Queen H3 immediately, but that looks sort of super scary to allow taking on C2. Or will he try... Because Queen H3, you just go F6, basically. That's, that's the whole point. And uh, or maybe you could play King F8 as well, and then Rook check. You go, go King F7, Queen H5, King E7. Probably going to run out of check. He's done it. Queen H3. It's 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 the best try. Yeah. <coughs> F6. So F6, Rook H8. Yeah, King F7, Queen H5, King E7. Then he only got Rook H7. So he's gone there. He's, he's tried that defense as well, which is also reasonable, but. Does White have anything here? I don't see it. Okay, just gone for a normal continuation, but that's kind of... Oh, right. There was maybe... Oh, Queen A3. You could have gone Queen A3 earlier, but I think, yeah, Black probably had everything covered more. Maybe not, I don't know. Yeah, but now I think he does have everything covered. So F3, yeah. White's fighting well. 96. 96 is, is a dangerous move, yeah. So... Uh, Black is really putting the pressure on, uh, playing a really good game, actually. Queen, uh, yeah, because what do you do about this threat of... Very resourceful. Now Queen D3 check. Very resourceful. Incredible. Oh, slip. Incredible game by mouse slip. Incredible. <laughs> the mouse is not slipping yet. Knight D4. Oh, no, it's pinned. No, it's pinned, um, yeah. It's a problem. It's pinned. Now he's going to get this gruesome end game. Rook F4. He's only got 11 seconds for the end game, though. Yeah, he's going to lose this. And he's, and he's a lot worse. Yeah. Uh, he's just losing, actually. Black's just picking up the pawns. I mean, good game by Black, I would say. To be honest, out of all the games I've seen tonight, this is a game that impressed me. The game really. of the evening. Well, Black really never, never gave White a chance, you know. Like, White was playing really resourceful ideas. And he still, it still wasn't enough. You know, oh, that's we're in, we're first. in second, but we're quite a long way behind first. Oh, okay, that's depressing. I, I, that's kind of what I feel like. You know, when whenever I'm watching a golf tournament, I'm in second. I'm quite a long way behind first. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, if we're in any lower league, this would be enough for promotion. But because it's Division Three, it's only the top team. So, uh, Admiral's taken on D8. Maybe Black could have just taken with a rook there, actually. Uh, but his idea is to take on F4 because the problem now the knight on D8 is always going to have a problem relocating because I feel like it was a little bit too passive taking back the knight. I think I would have taken with a rook, but he's gone for bishop C4, which is fairly reasonable. Now, I guess knight F4 is a move. Now, you've got to be careful because if you go rook B8, I have knight D7, so he's gone for this. Mm, I don't like this. Though. I don't like allowing the rook to get active on e7. This feels all wrong. Now, now it's game over. Yeah, he's, he's blundered the rook. Good game by Keith. Well done, Keith. Black didn't solve the problems well enough. Okay. Um, right. Let's see King's Brusher again. So, who's the guy at the top? Pigoretov for us because he's, oh. he's number one. Uh, he's, he's actually had it because normally Keith's top on the scorers, but it's somebody yeah. else who was the top. If we go back to he's the back. oh, sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, oh, Pirate Gav. 
Now, Pirate Gav. Is um, Gavin I Hall? Think, uh, who is Pirate Gav? I don't actually know. Newport. Might be Gavin Locke. Might be Gavin Locke. Uh, Gavin Locke, probably, yes. Yes, let's see Pirate Gav. But then I just, uh, yeah, we'll go for. Um, I forgot where we were. Can you click on his profile? Can you click on his profile? Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> What did you say? Um, Can you click on, click on it again? It won't come up on this. Oh, one. it won't come up. Oh, sorry. Um, but it doesn't say his name. It just says which teams he's in. But oh, so you, you think it might be? It might be Gavin Locke. I think you're right. I think it is. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense, right? Yeah, Newport Trops. Yeah, he's from that kind of area. Team Chessable. Maybe not. Okay, Queenie Free. And uh, yeah, Black's defending this quite well. So he's a piece, two pieces down actually. Might be, yeah, H5 though. H5, wow, this is a stunning idea. Where is this queen going? Well, not really queen H7, but then F, uh, G6. Queen H7, G6. Wow, what a tactic. Oh, take the queen, then take I the take queen, take the queen. That's actually a really clever tactic because if you take on F6, I take on G4 and I'm winning. So knight g oh, winning, like, oh. should, should be winning on material uh, yeah. because of the extra piece, but still there's a lot of work to be done. Knight c4 he'll probably play, yeah. Knight g6. Yeah, I don't think uh, Black's done this very well, but maybe he's still winning because a3 is coming. A3, yeah, oh, he's come kind of dropped back with a knight. Now a3, yeah. Uh, what an exciting game. Gosh. This, uh, this should be a stuff. This is clever stuff. I mean, what would you? Uh, I would. I would bet that White will win this sometime. Yes, yes, yeah, he's I, very fast. I, I think White will win this. Sometime. Pirate Gav is. Oh, the other one's Berserked. I'm not sure this is Gavin Locke. This doesn't look like Gavin Locke style. He, he wouldn't play this well. No, I mean, uh, no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm being a bit rude there. But what I mean is, he probably wouldn't be this tactically quick and resourceful. Somehow, this feels like somebody else. Maybe some guy was using an engine because Team yeah. Chess is all terrible. But, Anyone? Um, I have been told Chess before. Chess? I think, I think, um, hmm. Will Sonia or um, Checkmate or someone would know who Pirate Gav is and tell me. Okay, tell, tell her, tell her. Mm, Rook A7, though. Yeah, might be winning. The, yeah, he's going to lose on time anyway. It's going to be relevant. Yeah. Oh, winning sorry. the Rook, but I think he's just still going to lose on time. Wow, he's quick, though. He's quick. He's giving it a go. Wow. He's got to play instantly, yeah. Very hard just to play instantly. Yeah. Someone like that, that Penguin guy can play, could, would win from here. Because he would just play like all his moves using like oh, Andrew Tang. Point one of a second or even less. I mean, I feel like a situation like this, you should be able to, there should be like a button Ooh, where you just take Rook. No oh, no, Rook v Bishop. Okay. No, but oh, when you've got a situation right, yeah. like that, where you've got Rook and Bishop versus Rook, but you've got no time. Yeah. We're well, yeah, actually like, catching up a bit. I don't, I don't think we can do it, but. Yeah, are we really? How many points are we behind? Uh, we are 40 points behind. Okay, that's interesting, yeah. So Keith swapped it off to Rook and Pawn Endgame. But Keith is... Uh... White here, right? Isn't he worse here? He's white. I think he's in trouble, like rook d5 or something. Yeah, but I think, um, yeah, That's black great. shouldn't have allowed this. I mean, white shouldn't have allowed, I mean, black shouldn't have allowed this, so I'm getting confused. Maybe f3 now. Yeah, he's, he's found it. Yeah, very clever move. Rookie one, though. Rookie one. Maybe it's a draw, some kind of weird draw. No, no, he's, oh, now he's winning. I wonder that pawn. You know, he just had that ready. It's like, oh, I've got that move ready. <laughs> like, yeah. Bets his opponent to make a mistake. I mean, oh, okay, it's still a draw. It's still a draw, right? A very clever move by Black, uh, giving up the um, yeah, giving up, giving up the pawn. 
but maybe it's a draw anyway, even in without um, in without uh, blundering the F ball. Yeah, Let's see Ushko double berserk, and well, that, ended, that ended fairly quickly. What happened there? Ushko lost. Let's see, um, King Crusher. Now let's see Smooth Baron. Yeah, Smooth Baron. It's like that, that song, Smooth Criminal. Any, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> oh, that one, you... yes, I know what you mean. <laughs> it's from, I think it was from the album called um, Bad. Michael Jackson. Yeah, which came out in the, uh, I believe that came out in about, was it like 1988 or something like that? 87? Thriller came out in 80, 82, maybe. 1982. Off the Wall was 79. What do you think of Michael Jack? Do you think his legacy has been tarnished by all these kind of weird rumours about him? Or do you it think has. I like his songs. I really like his songs. But yes. You know, you know the interesting thing about that Elvis biopic? I was reading this article about his manager. It was a guy called Colonel Tom Parker. Mm. And apparently wasn't even called Colonel Tom Parker. He was actually a Dutch guy with a completely different name. It didn't even sound like remotely English at all. Oh. And he fled from... Uh, the Netherlands because he had a lot of gambling debts and he was also suspected of a murder. So the theory was later in his career, Elvis was kind of forced into playing Las Vegas and everything where he developed this drug addiction and he oh, gained yeah. more and healthy and led to his early death because his, his, his manager was a gambling addict and kind of forced him into... Oh, I didn't uh, notice his manager. Okay. Yeah. Night D3. Well, that's and, sad. Yeah. That's kind of sad, yeah. Maybe I should become like a music manager and force people into doing singing to cover my gambling debts. <laughs> Night C4, mate. Yeah, but that's going to go C5. Maybe C5, last move. So should we go back and move? Uh, could I Could I have gone C5 there? I feel like C5 there was a quite dangerous move because you can't take on C5. Oh, no, you can take on C5. Sorry, yeah. It's too... it's defended by the Spishop as well, yeah. Well, Knight D7, Knight D7 was probably the correct move, yeah. Um, um... But now he has, he has, uh, he has gone for the exchange and then take. And, um... Why it's better in this endgame, though, because of the isolated pawns or maybe not? I think white's better. Maybe just C four and and was was the move there and just go. Yeah. Tell you my favourite Michael Jackson song. Yeah. Um, you want to be starting something. Do you, you want to be starting something? Yeah, yeah, I like that one. Be starting something. You want to be starting something. Got to be starting something. Hard to get over. Good to get under. Stuck in the middle. With the pain is thunder. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, Eliorigami. Hi believe, there. Was that from? I, I think that maybe was from Thriller, one of the early albums. Yeah, I think it's an early one. It might have been. A, it might have even been off the wall, which was like seventy-eight, like uh, seventy-nine. I think off the wall was. But he had a kind of. I, I always feel like with Michael Jackson, his life is kind of similar to these kind of chess. Um, players like Bobby Fischer in a way because uh, they kind of end up doing something which is kind of weird. Yeah. For the to like do. Full of glory at the start and then it all goes wrong. Yeah, yeah, because um, exactly. You're like a prodigy forced into doing something that you don't, that doesn't necessarily lead to a very rounded existence. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, you see that now with all these, I always feel like with these chess professionals who start off when they're like, you know, nine, even like Magnus, really. I mean, he was like a chess professional from a very early age, right? Mm. And the theory was, well, he enjoyed it. It wasn't pest, you know, he wanted to do it. He wasn't yeah. pushed into it by his, his parents. Is that really true? I mean, would like a like a 10-year-old kid say, I want to uh, just do chess? It doesn't sound... Well, he definitely like seems to like it. 
He I mean, definitely like, I'm really sure like he likes it. it, don't get me wrong, okay. but I just feel like maybe now he's like burnt out by the whole experience. You know, you've seen that with this decision yeah. to um, not bother to play the maybe C4 for white. Well, like, well, like my son did lots of maths when he was little and he was hmm. like when he was about seven and he did his GCSE and he was really ahead, right? But now, but now, now, now it's not so good now. But now he's all about he just. Um, now yeah. he likes, you know, <laughs> going on holidays and going out to clubs and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so yeah, I think it's, it's funny because the stuff that you did when you were younger, you almost rebel against it automatically because you're kind of like, I want to prove yeah. that I'm not just all about that. I want to prove that I'm, 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 I'm a more rounded individual than you thought I was. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, yeah, part of that is like an automatic rebellion. Be very philosophical here. It's always like, the and I think also right that mm. um, that the, like as you get older, there's different things to be interested in. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it's a tragedy for white losers on time. Could have gone Nigel. Oh, the last move. Aaron, just one eight. second in it. Yeah, I think that's the that's the thing that I've struggled with. As I've got older, I've kind of realised that you know there's a lot more to life than chess, and you feel. Let's see pirate gov again. Just yeah. being a chess player, it, it, it's very limiting. This looks good for black, right? Yes. Uh, his pirate gav is black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Played very well because this guy is a good player. I think I played this guy before. He's from the national master R Tack. Another Armenian guy. Armenian. Yeah. Now, if we put the rook behind, there's always the knight to block. Yeah. His rook be one. He's probably just as well to just take the point. Yeah, he's doing just it. Just take it, exactly. Take and now these pawns are going to be decisive. Oh, I didn't even bother to check. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just no way you can hold that. It's just uh, just push. Yeah, I mean, Armenians, actually. Um, in, in Armenia, chess is um, part of the curriculum. Or was, yeah, yeah. it still is. Um, and they've obviously had a very rich history with chess players and everything. But yeah, I mean, uh, but that's normal to me because, you know, it's part of the curriculum, so what is, you know, it's a lesson. But I think that's a bit different from, say, saying to someone, look, let's do chess full time, do that for your whole life. And that's something that I've kind of come to realise is not a very healthy way to live. You know, but at the same time. Oh, what is Square Taker doing? Yeah, that's a weird move. Yeah, yeah. He nearly like made so this one is was, like, um, made I remember one. Alex Tucker doing that against Amelia Holland at the Lloyd's Bank Masters. Uh, uh, oh, I think right. he voted for it. Oh, by Stuart Rubin. Yeah. Yeah, I, I heard that story. Yeah, I don't think Alex Tucker plays chess anymore. I've actually forgotten he even existed. So is it kind of like a rude kind of thing to say you're so weak I can bring my king out early? I think he was still planning to win the game even though he'd brought his king out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, I've, I, it's kind of a dis disrespectful. Somebody's saying this isn't the tournament anymore. It's Daily Rapid Arena. Oh. oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong... Okay. Let's go back to the tournament then. Um. Okay, so uh, Wilsonia. We haven't seen Wilsonia play yet, have we? No. Is it how long is it? I'm talking. He's only got four minutes left. No, we haven't seen Wilsonia. Left. Is he? Is he a little bit in trouble because that knight on f3? But actually, knight d5 is a really good move because it's stopping any kind of infiltration by by black. Yeah. Maybe Queen H8 here. Queen H8, I was looking at that too. And then no, what, Queen H5. Queen F6. Oh, Queen F6. Queen, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can't, yeah, you, you're actually oh. quite stuck for moves here, I think. So Queen, Knight H4. Uh, Knight H4 is a good try, yeah. But if I just go you're King F1, King. I think you're, you're yeah. going to run out of ideas, aren't you? Yeah, King F1 yeah. would be a good response, I think. And then Knight F3, and then maybe I could even go King E2 and get my, or H4 would be a good move. H4 or Queen, yeah, just crudely taking looks good. Very clever play by Warsodia. I, 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 I retract what I said earlier about him being a dinosaur. <laughs> he's not a dinosaur. He's a he's a human being. I'm not. I'm not a dinosaur. I'm a human <laughs> being. I'm not a. 
Pterodactyl. What was your favourite dinosaur? And we asked. I think we might have asked this question before. Oh well, I think I used to say Brontosaurus, but they're quite mm. tame as far as these dinosaurs go. Because that was yeah. the one. There was the big, the huge one that only ate plants. That was it was also Diplodocus as it was well. Diplodocus wasn't there. Yeah, um, they would then, eat a huge amount of foliage every day. Yeah, they, they'd have to eat. You just get through so many trees every single day. It was just ridiculous. Night of five, maybe. Because I used to say I didn't like oh, Tyrannosaurus really Rex. Well, I think now I do like Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually it's, it's quite scary that they lived. Uh, the last dinosaurs died out like 65 million years ago. It's quite scary to think people, they said in Jurassic Park, the book, they said you can't, the human mind cannot comprehend geological time. You cannot comprehend how long, you know, like yeah. a million years is. It's just such a long period of time. Do you know what I mean? Just like, two minutes left. So let's see Pirate Gav because he's got, he's at the top. And berserking against Uno Dos Chess. Maybe Knight A5 here. Yeah, Knight A5. Queen A4. Yeah, yeah. Playing all the right moves. B6. Maybe Knight D4 now. Knight E5. Yeah, they're playing all the right stuff. This is really impressive stuff. Maybe D6 here, winning a piece. Oh, D7 no, is No, it doesn't win a piece because B7 is oh. defended. I'm talking nonsense. Maybe Knight takes D7 was actually moving instead of Rook D1. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, just hitting the. Uh, but this seems good for White anyway. Tripled C pawns, though. Maybe C five for white. Oh yeah. As you can as you can see this, Danny. If you want a bit of tech support, getting your streaming set up sorted. Ah, uh, it's not really the streaming that's a problem. It's more the uh, it's a it's a camera problem. You know, I've got the streaming set up uh, sorted. It's just it's just a camera. So yeah, I'll, I'll send you a bell. Uh, some Chris, are you on Twitter? Send me a message on Twitter, and I'll. I'll um I'll reply to you on Twitter. Does anyone use email these days? What's happened to the uh, What's happened to the game, Natasha? Oh, sorry, it was a draw. They drew. I think. Oh, they the, drew. Oh, the streams. The uh, tournament. The arena's going to be over soon. Ah, oh, well, right, right. It looks like we're going to finish in second, which is really, really good, but not enough to get promoted. Not enough to get promoted. No, great. exactly. Ushko against this against this top guy again. Oh, this is the final game. Yeah. Forty Rob seconds guy. left. This Rob guy's just like a machine, right? I mean, it's just. Yeah. I mean, it's just an absolute machine. But this is a draw now. This is a draw because you don't have look F one. Yeah, you don't have enough resources to win this. I don't think. Although actually, he's he's making a good job of it. Yeah, I mean, still you got this weak G6 pawn, but I don't think you can really create enough. Smooth Baron, whenever you comment Ooh. on my games, I lose. Oh, sorry, Smooth Baron. Is that because we put you off by talking about your game while you're playing it? It's probably because I, I put him off by ridiculing him and saying <laughs> terrible player is. I'm oh, well done, I've okay, got a draw. Why is your name Smooth Baron, if you don't mind me asking? I'm always curious to know why people choose the names that they, that they do. Uh, it's all over. It's all over. So where did we finish, Natasha? We finished, I can confirm, in second place. So Yerevan Federation of Friends were in first. Congratulations to them. They go up to Bundesliga 2. So that's like just, there's just two, um, mm. so one and two. So only 20 teams ahead out of goodness knows how many teams. We stay in um, 3C. Nice. Uh, next one's on Thursday on 3C and um, and we had fantastic performances from Pirate, Gav, Ushko the Bear, Atom Rod and then Mouse Slip, VKT Chess, Ferrari Fan, Smooth Baron, Kings Crusher, Square Taker and David Wilson were our top 10. Very good. Um, we had 30, 30 players, which is, I don't know whether that's a record, but it's a, a very good turnout, might be the record. Yeah, really impressive. He's, he's so, getting very popular. Somebody just, uh, Smooth Baron just replied to my call. Sorry. To ah, Smooth Baron was actually, actually 
invented by Neil, Neil Bradbury. Bradbury. I should have had a spell in there, but Neil, I played Neil Bradbury the other day, actually. Uh, Did the you? Last guy, yeah. Ah, uh, right. In the last round of, of a four and seven week, I managed to win, which I was quite happy about because if I had won, I wouldn't have even covered the top two. Uh, but. Um, so what, why did he call you Smooth Baron out of interest? I think mean, Neil's got a bit of a wicked sense of humour. <laughs> uh, 40 years ago, it's a long time ago. Jesus, 40 years ago. That's like 1982. 1982, yes. Yeah. yeah. Same year that Thriller came Falklands out. Falklands War. <laughs> Falklands War. Same year that Thriller came out. Um, uh, World Cup was in Spain, I believe. There was a World Cup in Spain. Uh, what other things happened in 1982? I think we've had these discussions. Before. We, we, I think, it, did we do 1982 before? We might have. I think we, I think we did 1982 before. Yeah, or did we do, no, because one of the players was, we maybe did 1980 because there's David Wilson 1980. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe. No, he's changed it now to Wilsonia 85. Oh, yeah. So now, so, now, he's, now, he, now he's lying about his uh, birthday. Well, <laughs> just the cool name. Eighty-five. Can you remember anything that happened in eighty-five, Natasha? Nineteen eighty-five. Um. Hmm. No, no. Uh, I should know. I should know. Have you got something in mind? No, not really. I think there was a the Live Aid concert was in something like eighty-five, eighty-four. Might have been eighty-four actually. Um, was it? Yeah. I think Madonna's Like a Virgin came out in 85. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to look up Live Aid. I thought it was 86 Live Aid. 85, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of, like, pop music around about that point, wasn't there? It was, like, the sort of mid-'80s. There's all these kind of terrible songs. Live like Aid? Philadelphia, January 13th, 1985. It was 85, And then yeah, Wembley. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was oh, you're right, 85. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, it was Live Aid, 85. But Dennis Taylor know? Snooker final. Thank you, Osania. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Kevin wants right. you on his quiz team. Kevin Winter wants you on his quiz team. I was actually, I did a quiz myself the other night. I think I mentioned it, and I actually won it by myself, which is a bit sad. But, um, yeah, I'm not bad at quizzes, um, I like to think, but... Other people might have a different. I remember you doing all the quiz machines like at Hastings and places, just you know, like yeah, yeah that's right. Them. They don't have them as much now anymore. They don't have, no. um, uh, I think, because of COVID as well, and all that touching. Yeah, but they're a bit of a there used to be professional quiz players who would go around. Gavin Wool used to be very good, didn't he? Well, Gavin's well. still a very active, yeah. quizzer. he's a very good quizzer, like, yeah, uh, one of the best ones I've come across, but. There, there used to be people who played quiz machines for a living. For sure, um, yeah, I remember. And um, uh, there was a guy called Johnny Nelson, who's like a chess player. I don't know if you know a guy called Johnny Nelson. And he used to go around. I know him, but I didn't know he was a quizzer. No, he's not really so much now. But back in the 1980s, what they used to do is they'd buy a, a quiz machine and you'd have it at home, say, and then you'd learn all the questions on the quiz machine. You go to the pub. And you clean out the uh, quiz machines at the pub, which were basically the same machines. Yeah. Around, and you could make 500 quid a week just doing that. Yeah. Obviously, the, the landlords would get annoyed with you, but apparently that that was like, it's just an easy, like being like a chess bum, you know? But you're yeah. a machine bum. There was and a guy they, called um, Chris yeah. Howell who did that. Not the Chris Howell from Kent. It was Chris Howell, um, another Chris Howell, who... Uh, was yeah he at uni and he would do all the quiz machines that was his thing yeah yeah but it's also dave you ever watched eggheads natasha there was dave yes. um tremendous knowledge dave who sadly died quite recently quite a young guy like a black guy dave rainford <laughs> oh right he died he died quite young and also we died off but um he um he would go around with uh, he was friends with johnny nelson and they would go okay. around with clubs together so Interesting anecdotes, you know, brings back memories. You know, I wish I could yes. go to the 1980s. I think it was a cooler decade. It was cool. <laughs> All right. Anyway, congratulations, English chess players, on finishing second. Um, thanks, all everyone, very much for playing. And thanks, everyone, um, for your comments in the chat. And thanks very much for watching. And thank you, Danny. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks, Natasha. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um,